Hello and welcome to this week's Art Systems Advocacy Team video and today we're going to talk about uh, cryptography and how to secure information on your applications. My name is Jay Santos and as, as usual make sure to subscribe to Art Systems channel to find out about the latest Advocacy Team videos. Today we'll be working with Crypto API which is a component that is available on the Forge and we'll use the Crypto API demo application that is also available on the Forge to show some of the features available on this component. So let's get started. So let's get started by showing the encrypted site property demo. Over here, I have a site property already saved. It's a string that says my super secret site property. And here is the encryption, encrypted version of the site property. Now let's have a look at Service Studio and how we are working on this page. So let's get back to the page here. And so on the page, first of all, I have the input field, which is get which is attached to the variable the crypt property, which gets the saved site property. Then I have here an expression where I'm showing the encrypted site property, which is populated. Uh, which is populated with the site property that's called protected site property. If we go to data, I have here the protected site property. And I have a button that calls the uh, save screen action over here. But first of all, let's see what we are doing with preparation of the page. So we open it. And the first thing I do is I check if it is the first time I'm running this page. If it is, I do not have a encryption key saved on my site. So if I go back to data, I also have a site property that says save key. If this is empty, that means that I still don't have a key. So the first thing I do, I generate a new AES encryption key. Next, I save this key. So in order to save it, I pass in an input to the key, which is an output of the previous server action. And then I can set the mode on which I save this key. And I have three modes, environment, public key, or raw. By default, we'll use environment, which allows you to use, uh, to use this key in the same environment later. I also have the public key option, which is gonna save you a public-private key pair, which you can use to, to, to share the public key later. And raw, which, as the name implies, saves the key as raw text. So, of course, you should avoid this option as much as possible because saving your private key as raw text is not advisable. After I have a key, I call the AES encrypt server action, which will just create the first value of my site property and encrypt it. So I call the server action AES encrypt, which is part, of course, of the crypto API. As input, I set a plain text, which is by default says attack at dawn, and the key that I use to encrypt. After that, I set an assign, and I save my AES key on the site properties, and I define the site property, protected site property, with the encrypted output of the AES encrypt serv server action. Now, once again, this process here is in case it is the first time you're running uh, this page, meaning you don't have an AES key. But what if, what if you do have an AES key? So the first thing you do, you read the key from the, from the site properties, and you assign to the decrypted property parameter from the page a, the output of the AES decrypt action. And on the AES decrypt action, let's open it here, I pass as parameters, first of all, the encrypted site property and the AES key. And the output of that is going to be the decrypted property, which I'm assigning to the parameter. So let's have a look. I'm going to open the page again, and I'm gonna change the site property to my brand new super secret site property. I'm going to click on save. And as you can see here, the encrypted site property have changed. 
I'm gonna open my page, I'm gonna reopen it, and if I go to the encrypted site property again, you can see that I have my brand new super secret site property. So that's how you can encrypt and decrypt information using AES encryption with Crypto API. The Crypto API component also offers a password generator. So <clears throat> on our password generator screen, I have an input where I will define the length of the password being generated. Um, and then beneath it, I have an expression that will receive the generated password. So when I click the button, the screen action generate, the generate password is called. And it's super simple. The first thing you do, it runs the generate password server action, which is once again is part of the crypto API uh, component. And I pass as a parameter the length defined on the input. And I simply assign the output of generate password to the generated password expression. Let's have a look at it in action. So I have this screen here open. Uh, let's add a length of 10. I click on generate password. And I have here a password with uh, letters, uppercase, lowercase letters, and numbers. If I increase the length, say, to 50, I generate it again. And there you go. You have a newly generated password. The crypto API component can also be used to validate uh, password hashes. So we have a, on the Crypto API demo application, we have a demonstration of that. And we have an input field where you input the password. And every time you update this input field, the, the screen action on change is called. So let's have a look at that. And what on change do is uh, it do an Ajax refresh of the password hashes. Let's have a look back at the screen. So password hashes is this expression here. And on this expression, I have uh, a call for four different hash algorithms for the password that you've inputted. So you have each one of them, you call the hash password uh, function, where the first parameter is the password that was just inputted and, uh, and it's associated with a the, with the parameter of the screen. And the second parameter is the algorithm used for the hash. So we're doing uh, it to each one of the four algorithms used by Crypto API. And I can also verify if this hash matches the password inputted by using this input at the bottom of the screen, which is associated with the hash local parameter of the page. When I click on verify, uh, the screen action verified is called. And what it do is it compares, it calls the compare password function from the crypto API, uh, the crypto API extension. And what it do, what compare password do is it compares the hash parameter with the password parameter uh, and verify if they, if they both match. If they match, I show a success a message saying password matches hash, or I show an error saying password does not match hash. Let's have a look at that in action. So I'm gonna go to my hashing password screen. I'm gonna put here my bank account password, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. As you can see, when I, when I change this input field, the Ajax refresh updates all the hashes. If I add the seven here, you can see that it changed, and then I can get any one of these, so let's copy one of the hashes, and I click on verify, and you can see password matches hash. If I change one of the letters here from C, say, to D, verify the password does not match hash. So, of course, you can use it for uh, both password storage and validation on your applications. So, this is a very brief overview of what Crypto API uh, can do. You have some other uh, features that, that you can that I encourage you to download Crypto API and explore. But that is, uh, th that is the basics of how you can use Crypto API to protect your data on your applications. As always, I hope this video is useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any feedback and suggestions on content, 
please let us know and we'll see you in the next video.